Wh why would you open a door like that? I used to work this job, right? And every single Sunday, me and my friend would have bagels for our lunch. Bagel Sunday. And it was fun. We'd get all excited every Sunday. We'd be like, oh my god, it's Bagel Sunday. What are we putting on it today? Chicken, Pyrenees. Oh my god, we're gimps. And then I left that job and I kind of forgot about Bagel Sunday. But recently I was like, oh my god, I'll make bagels today. So I got really excited and I was like, I'm going to put all that shit on it. And I, got, I was like, I'm going to put that on it and put this on it. And I topped this fucking bagel. And I was disappointed. I thought it kind of tasted like shit. But that was not the bagel's fault. That was my fault for thinking all this random shit was going to enhance the bagel when it didn't. Anyway, Shadows of Doubt is a bagel. Shadows of Doubt is a sandbox detective simulator game. You are dropped in a procedurally generated city with procedurally generated people, with procedurally generated crimes within procedurally generated walls, all of which you can enter. All the NPCs have jobs. I'm taking off the fucking hat. I feel stupid. I'm sorry. And they will live their own lives without the input of the player. I have goosebumps. What's happening? <laughs> These murders occur and then you are given full autonomy of how you, the detective, would like to go out and solve them. My friend and muscular woman enjoyer, Brandon, one night was like, hey, there's this game that you'd really love, and that was that. So, with nothing but a questionable human being's recommendations, I jumped right in. And as the kids say, I was gagged. <laughs> Immersion is this buzzword in the gaming industry that I don't really like because most of the time it means that a game's gonna be really tedious and have really boring mechanics. But by definition, immersion means having a deep mental involvement in something. And Shadows of Doubt was that for me because I played for two hours and then I couldn't fucking sleep. My head was still in the case, I couldn't get out. This pin board, this was in my mind all night. And yes, I've said many times before that I don't like procedurally generated shit. Like, that's how we end up with games like Starfield. But I think it works here, kind of. I'll get into it later. So the main loop of Shadows of Doubt is very simple. A murder happens and then you go seek out the clues and hopefully find the suspect so you can hand them to the law to get a spanking. And then in your downtown, you'll go around and you'll pick up odd jobs, you know, like throwing coffee in some poor bastard's face or going and destroying someone's house. I just do as I'm told, okay? I'm a company man. And this is all to earn money to raise up your social ranking. And it's as addictive and enthralling as it all sounds. Now, it's really hard to explain how good this game is in what what it's like without first-hand experience. So what I'd like to do is take you on a ride along, you know, buddy cop style. Come on. Because I want to show you how magical this game can be and how good it is, but then also how it could ultimately fail and not be very good and become really gross. Remember the bagel thing. Nine a.m. Monday, January second, Chang Boulevard. The air was sharp. It was cold. Cold enough to make my balls do that thing where they get really small. First things first, local diner. Get a coffee and look for work. A public humiliation job for 700 crows. Perfect. I was directed towards the staff of the establishment. I spoke to the barmaid. She seemed squeamish. She gave me a photo directing me to a briefcase. What's this, you fucking piece of shit? It's broken. The game's bugged. The game's broken. Like, I'm not- Okay, we'll, just, we'll start a new world. Sorry. Everything works, town. That ought to do it. Also, I'm not gonna do that voice. I'm gonna stop doing it. I'm sorry. That was- That was cringe. And yes, I'm called Ryan Goslin. It's called manifesting. Look it up. 9 a.m. Monday, January 2nd, Magnesium Boulevard. The air was sharp. Cold. Cold enough to make things cold. Diner. Job. Arrest warrant. Perfect. Information on the perk? Lives in Bennett Towers. Ooh, type A fingerprints. And loves a couple of cans. That's sick, son of a bitch. So I grabbed some handcuffs and headed to Bennett Towers. First I scrubbed each door on the floor for the type A fingerprints. No luck. I asked around, but the residents were not very forthcoming with information. You know what they say. You want to make an omelette? Look up a recipe. Now as I said, the game gives you full autonomy of how you would like to solve these cases. You know, I could be sneaky. Walk, pick my way in. Wait until they go out to work. Have a wee snoop. Maybe go in through the vents. Or I could have bought different gadgets from that vending machine. You know the vending machine that readily sells tracking devices and blunt force weapons? I like my approach, which is smashing a door so hard into someone's face that they lose motor function. That's why you wear the Timmy's, eh? So I systematically did this to each apartment, causing irreversible damage to multiple people. 
and through doing so, I still couldn't find my matching print. However, I came across a name that I couldn't get a print for of a fellow called Seth Schultz, so I decided to go to the Gov database. The Gov database is essentially cheating, it's this computer in the government building that has like everyone's information. As long as you have a name, you can type it in, it will give you everything about them. It essentially trivialises a lot of the game, so don't use it if you want to be like cool, maybe lock that away. I looked up Mr. Seth and bingo, we found our man. I looked up where Seth worked, the yellow dragon. It was time to pay him a visit. Boom, Seth, there you are, you naughty little boy. Sadly, he was surrounded by staff, but I'm not the type of guy to let others get in my way. So I arrested Seth, and then after his uncooperative colleagues were dispatched with a few truncheon blows to the head, I was done and off to hand in my case. A good job done. But I couldn't rest on my morals for too long because before I knew it, you know this twat? I saw them. <gasps> oh my god. The report of our murder came in. There's been a murder. So I raced to the scene. A sick sight. The middle of the street, satanic markings on the ground. SS paid was scrawled in blood on the wall behind. Some real sick motherfucker was here. Definitely the work of the Red Gums. They're a cull in the game that I will get to later. I started checking the body. <gasps> This kid couldn't catch a fucking break. First I was plumping up his head like a cushion and now he's dead. So the game isn't without his little hiccups and glitches. Like he that tells me he's been shot and stabbed to death, which is a glitch. You know, this is, he stabbed to death. He was stabbed. This is the one you go off, you know. And then this, this clue, let's play, like who, that's not a name. Obviously not right. You know, and sometimes you'll open a paper and it'll be a bit glitched. And then sometimes the rapture will happen. <laughs> Just little things, you know. So the murder weapon is a straight razor. Bit of a close shave if you ask me. <laughs> So I took Seth's wallet, checked his details, and decided to go to his apartment to find some clues. Oh, sorry, pal. I found a note from E.H., a partner, perhaps? And then I found a human skull? Um, well, that's not ideal. I checked his computer and there was no sign of Seth's details on it. Am I in the right fucking apartment? Okay, I'm in the wrong apartment, but that person does have a skull in their home. So after breaking into the right apartment, I printed off a couple of strange emails on his computer. I checked his trash for clues. I noticed that you could see the scene of the crime from his window. I guess he had the sights, but not the foresight. <coughs> but wait, I noticed something. He was killed right under a CCTV camera outside. Our lurks just turned. I hacked into the CCTV and I took note of all the faces that were seen around the crime scene near the time of death. These are our prime suspects. And that's where the investigation starts. Don't you worry, Seth. I know we've had a hard time. But I'm gonna find out who did this to you. Now that I have their faces, it's time to do some old-fashioned detective work and ask around. Now, interacting with NPCs in this game is a bit of a mixed bag. You know, it's not quite L.A. Noir. You, you fuck young boys about this? this? Are you, you a madman? Mad man? You can essentially ask NPCs a number of questions like, What is your name? Can I use your fingerprints for the investigation? Have you seen anything weird? Do you know these people? And when they agree, they can be super useful. But 90% of the time, they will tell you to fuck off. And I get it, I, I don't blame them. Like, a random homeless man comes up and goes, Hey, what's your name and can I have your fingerprints? I'd say fuck off too. But because the NPCs are so stiff, it makes the gameplay feel really cold. Like for instance, someone's partner will have just been murdered and you can't even ask them about the partner. Their partner will be dead and they'll be walking about the apartment as if it's normal. <laughs> At this point I decided to break into Seth's workplace out of hours to see if maybe I could get more details on him. And maybe one of his co-workers are a match for one of the pictures. But sadly, my cool after hours detective party was ruined by this jobs worth who doesn't know when to clock out. Oh my god, fucking fuck. And they shot me, they shot me. This is why I could never live in like America. Like if you break into a bar after it's shot, that deems you okay to be dead? <laughs> fucking Kyle Rittenhouse over here. What an absolute cow, man. Anyway, after being shot, I headed to the local sync disc clinic. You know, that's basically the hospitals in this game, except you can install sync discs, which are essentially body augments that give you in-game perks. You know, they're simple ones. This one will give you more inventory space. This one will let you be able to tell someone's height just from looking at a photo of them. Neat. And then they go to weird things like earn a maximum of 40 crows per day taking pictures of dirty business bathrooms. Credits gained per picture depend on the level of mess in the picture. Okay. What a shame. But when I was at the sync clinic, I came across a familiar face. This is Seth's partner. Now, as I said, dialogue's super limited, so I can't really ask anything. But then I came across an even worse case. Right. Oh my god. You got a faker here. We have civilians faking disabilities in the sync clinic of all places. I'll be back for you later. So one of Seth's emails that I came across was from a Samantha Richards telling them to never mention to anyone that they matched on Dove, which is an online dating service in this world. Samantha was his boss. 
Hmm. I decided to go pay her a visit. She didn't have a matching print, but I decided to ask her about some of the suspects, and boom, we have a match. I got their address, and I went for a visit, and then I slipped in the lobby of their building. I'm so embarrassed. The prints on the door weren't a match, so I just crossed them off for now. Then I continued my investigation by asking a few more people. Oh, can someone just know someone, please? <gasps> oh, it's because you're a mugger. You can get to fuck with that. <laughs> my broken leg, great. That was, that was pretty embarrassing for you, mate. You broke my leg and I still managed to kick the shit out of you. Get it up, you. This took a while, but eventually we got a lead. Hotel receptionist tells me Benton Parker. He really likes grind iron football. Okay, ma'am. I go to check the directory, which is like a phone book, by the way. I race to his apartment. Bump into him on the steps. He's quite uncooperative. That's fine, I'm gonna have a cheeky wee look around your place, if that's okay. Buddy's got some fucking cake on him, by the way. Fingerprints on the door aren't a match. But what's the harm in having a cheeky wee look while he's out? Nothing except a large dairy intake. Two suspects out. Back to the streets to ask around. Bang. Lead three. Haiti Drayton. By this point, time has moved on, and I'm starting to worry that the killer's gonna kill again. They do that, by the way. Within the game, you have, like, I think it's, like, roughly 24 hours in game time before the killer will then strike again. And this is bad, because someone else dies, but they also usually leave more clues, so if you're struggling, someone's life... More clues, you decide. So time's running out, so I don't hesitate to put this door through this lady's face. She'll be eating through a straw, but I'm gonna get the killer. Suddenly a horrifying creature emerges, but thankfully I'm built like a gazelle, and this rotund freak doesn't stand a chance against my prance. This fat oaf that was chasing me is actually Haiti, who I'm looking for, um, and luckily for me they have the memory of Prince Andrew. They refuse to give me any information, so next best thing, I decide to sneak back into their apartment to make sure that this isn't the person. And after an agonising wait, I realise that Haiti is a lazy bastard and is never going to leave this apartment, so it's time to put matters into my own hands. Instead of waiting for them to leave, I decide to cave in their skull with my truncheon. Now I'm free to snoop around for a few minutes, while they collect their brain matter off the floor. And after I search, no prints. So I've probably changed the lives of two people tonight who are completely innocent. Remember how I said the game gives you full autonomy of how you want to do this? You can be a giant psychopath in this game. You can just break into people's apartments, steal their money, throw shit at them, knock them out. <laughs> One of my favourite things about this game is like the little moments, like going for a coffee to look over my notes while I'm solving a case. These aren't necessary to the gameplay, but because you feel like you're role-playing as a detective, it feels like apt, it feels like this is what you should be doing. All I need in this game is if you give me a wife that I can go home and emotionally neglect, because I just can't switch off. Will you get off my back? But sitting in a diner with a coffee, as the wind is hitting the window and the rain's outside and, and everyone's passing by, and I'm just sat here drinking my coffee, trying to look over my notes and figure out what the fuck is going on. That feels like I'm a detective. That makes me feel like Ryan Gosling. Like the cool one. Not not the sex doll one. Not that one. No, stop. Not a him. Not a him. For such a cold, damp city that's filled with murder, it's surprisingly cosy. I don't think you understand what it's like to come home in the middle of the night to your little apartment and you've left your TV on and it's playing with this like, dim light hitting the living room. Oh, it's fucking... The TV's awesome, by the way. Can we add the news to it? Imagine they told you about the murders on here. So cool. Oh, and yes, you can buy apartments in this game and you can decorate them however you want and it's super in-depth. More in-depth than you would ever think. Ugh. The game does such a good job at making you feel like it's a real city and you're involved in it that like all these little moments that aren't necessary feel like something you should be doing and it gives you this refreshing break in between the chaotic gameplay of trying to find the clues and chase the murderers and obviously some of these mechanics are baked into the actual gameplay like you need to eat sleep shower which you should do being smelly in this game is the worst because it's like a debuff that like you actively smell genuinely so don't be a smelly wee boy now at this point in the case i had quite limited options all i have are these photos to go on i I mean, I could go to like the pawn shop or maybe some underground uh, black market dealers and check their ledgers and see if anyone's bought a knife recently, but I don't see that happening. So I'm just going to keep asking people around with these photos and hopefully we find our last person. So back to the streets I go with three suspects down, one possible killer left. At this point, I thought maybe it was one of Seth's neighbours that had done this. So I sneak into the security room of his apartment building and I find all the records of the tenants. Maybe one of these records will match a face. No luck. But while asking around, a few people said they saw the individual around the Lucky Oyster Bar. And with nothing else to go on, I decided to check there. Unfortunately, it was closed, but at this point, I'm a badass noir detective and no door is stopping me. So I grabbed a bin and I threw it through the window. Quickly scrambled in before the witnesses appeared and boom, Philip Kotnick. Oh, you crafty son of a bitch. No back tower, 15th floor. Could this be our person? No match in the door. No answer after a knock. It was time to slide in. But after ransacking the place, another dead end. Completely out of leads, I headed to the diner for a coffee to clear my mind. What the fuck am I missing, I thought. There has to be something. And then I remembered this stupid note. Let's play AC apostrophe DH. It's definitely a glitch because no one could have this name, but fuck it. I'm going to check the directory. 
Oh my god, I'm a fucking idiot. D chat. Blinded by my own cockiness. It has to be a glitch, I thought. The answer was right there the whole time. I'm a fucking idiot. 11.10am, 601 Bennett Towers. Sweaty palms as I get to the door. This is it. I check for prints. Well, shit on my dick. Oh, you muscular little freak. Knock knock, justice is here. Booze everywhere. Candles. Cult posters. Yeah, this is the sick motherfucker, all right. Now, I was unable to get a print for some reason. I couldn't scan their hands. But I need to be 100% sure this is the right person. So after a few cheeky blows to the head for fun, I decided to go to the Galv database and see if the prints matched. But because this idiot doesn't have a real name and they use a fucking gamer tag instead, it wasn't coming up. So next best thing, I'm going to break into where they work and find the company records and match the fingerprints. And after a quick bit of snooping, there it is. I got you, motherfucker. I handed them the case. It was correct and I went for a victory cup of coffee. So there, as you can see, that was a fairly simple case, a, a very simple case that I made 20 times harder because I'm a fucking idiot. You could have solved this case in so many different ways that I wouldn't even have thought of. And that's the amazing thing about this game is all the little details that I could have missed that you might pick up on. Like, I recently just noticed that the money's called crows. And what do you call a pack of crows? Genius. And then I recently watched this video by That Boy Wags, great, great channel, but he showed 50 details that you might not know are in the game. And I've played this game for over 30 hours, and I didn't know a lot of these, which is embarrassing. There's so many little things in this game world that the game doesn't tell you about, and you just have to figure out. Speaking of game world, now I'm not a super perceptive human being, which is good because I'm playing as a detective, but it was maybe over 10 hours in that I was like, hey, the setting of this game's a bit weird. <laughs> You know, because it's like, the, the game has an amazing aesthetic, don't get me wrong, the streets feel super vintage and futuristic at the same time, it's like noir, but there's neon. Like, the phones and PCs are really old-fashioned, but they're installing discs into human beings to give them augments. I was like, what the, what the hell's going on here? So I decided to look up the game's lore. Oh boy. School's in session. So apparently this game is taking place in an alternate history to ours, where in 1610, Henry IV of France isn't assassinated, which then leads to the English inventor, William Lee, to start an early industrial revolution in France. And then, the Jacobite Rising of 1745 happens. This makes Charles Edward Stuart the king, King Charles III, making France and England friends, ooh, who then form the Anglo-French Empire, which then stops the American Revolution from happening. This union is then ripped apart during the Mustard War, I don't fucking know, and then after the Mustard War, the union is reorganised into the United Atlantic States in 1902, or the UAS for short. They then bring in corporate personhood into law, which basically gives companies and corporations basic human rights. They bring that into law to help boost the economy, and then in 1965, Starch Cola, who is the world's oldest mega corporation is elected the president of the UAS and they replace all the local police forces with their own starch cola enforcers. You play as a character in 1979 where due to massive amounts of industrialization and a massive radioactive fallout from the Mustard War, the ozone layer is fucked. This causes the sea levels to rise and leaves the sky in a constant state of storm and fog, meaning that all cities are made on platforms in the ocean surrounded by toxic water. And in order for citizens to then go to one of the only places on earth that isn't destroyed, they have to work their whole lives to build up their social credit to get enough to retire to the fields. Yeah, and then there's that cult, the Red Gums, who are like this middle class cult that worship like Eden Kruger who made Starch Cola and they believe sacrificing like poor people to him will basically get them into the fields. It's like every Tory voter in the UK. And then there's the LEM which is like a revolutionary like socialist group that hate capitalism and it comes from the term Levy en main. Every food you eat like milk and meat is synthetic obviously because of global warming. I think it's a shame that all this lore is kind of just put on loading screens that you only get when you boot up the game. I think there's so much more to be uncovered here and so much cool world building to be discovered but you know that's that's a job for the community not me i'm not gonna do that speaking of the community though it's great subreddit is great discord's great it's full of people talking about cases they've had and how they solved them showing off their cool apartments they've decorated and the main thing talking about the future and what they want added to the game so i want to talk about a few things i'd like this game to add because i just for funsies killing people i'd like to kill people <laughs> now you can't kill people in the game you're a detective i get it it makes sense like you can carry a gun but you can't use it you can only use like blunt force weapons and throw stuff which i as i said i get i'm a detective but how cool would it be if you could become some noir detective vigilante you know chasing down the murderers but not handing them in, just seeking the ultimate revenge. You know, you could become the very thing you hunt. Like, fuck, you'd become like Rorschach. Worst politicians will look up and shout, save us. No, we 
Jesus. No. You can have like underground hitman jobs for like the mafia where they give you a few clues and then you have to go get someone to whack. And obviously the penalty in like the main murder cases here is that you wouldn't get paid because you're killing the murderer. But you get to play God a bit, so I'd take it. Multiplayer, multiplayer would be so sick. Like you could solve cases with your friends. It'd be cool if one of you could be the murderer and they have to act like an NPC. That'd be really cool. It'd be like Among Us if it was good. You know, better dialogue, more murder variety. I'd love like accidents where people are like, oh, you fell. And you'd be like, no, he didn't. Uh, more set dressing. I'd like to go into the murderer's house and it looks like John Doe's apartment, you know? Or like this this bit from the Batman. That'd be sick. Speaking of the Batman, Batman, let me be Batman. I want to be Batman. Let me be the world's greatest detective in this game. This game has infinite possibilities of things you could add that would make it amazing. You know, so much potential. But I keep having to remind myself that this game is made by like a tiny team. Like three people are programming this. Like to get to the point we're at at the moment must have been so much hard work. Like, imagine how much work they've put in and they've done an amazing job. And then you do that and then the community is just like, hey, add this or this. I'd love this. This would be even better. Why aren't they doing this? It must be exhausting. And like the Steam Awards recently just gave the, the award for the most innovative game to Starfield. <laughs> does Steam know what the fuck that means? And when I look at this game and I think about how much it could add and how much it could grow, it does scare me when I see that 1.0 comes out this year. That worries me a little. And thankfully in a recent update, mod support has just been added, which is going to change everything, I hope. But it's using Mod.io and I don't know anything about coding, but everyone says that Mod.io is like stinky, poo poo, ooh, no, boo. But I'm very excited for the thought of talented people making custom cases. The idea of someone making a custom city with a custom murder with custom like clues painted down and I can play it and be like that was great and I can go online and see how other people solved it and all the little bits I missed. Oh my god I'm soaking wet thinking about it. The case I showed you I think is a great example of how this game can be really fun also kind of bad at the same time. That case was really simple it basically gave me the answer right at the start and if I hadn't been an idiot I wouldn't have chased in all these leads I wouldn't have been like oh what's this I would have just figured it out immediately. The magic of the game comes from your first few cases you know where you feel like a detective and everything feels shiny and new and you're like oh my god what am I going to do next to solve this murder because the game is great at giving you these little moments that make you feel like a real detective trying to solve a real case but as you play the game more you'll start to realize something about the game and for me it's the one big glaring issue. I was doing this case where I found this guy murdered in a hotel room and inside his apartment there was a note from his partner that said no one's following you take your pills. Then I found a diary that the victim was writing where he was logging everywhere time and place that he saw this individual that he thought was stalking him. Then I found he'd written a letter to the hotel manager asking them to check the CCTV for this person that was stalking them and they were like I can't help you. I even came across a letter that he'd written to his mum who was out in the field retired telling her what was going on in his life and this got to me emotionally. I was like oh my god this poor person has been going through it. There's been someone stalking them, no one's listened and now it's too late to help but maybe I can be the person to avenge them and find justice. So after chasing all the leads and then coming up empty I went to a pawn shop and I found that someone had recently bought a knife the same as the murder weapon. I went to the apartment, broke in, and boom, there's the killer, oh wow, but there was no aha, or any form of narrative or motive, it was just some random guy. Because the game isn't making a story or a narrative for you to follow, it's creating a puzzle. And that's my biggest issue with the game, is there's no way to get emotionally involved in a case, you know, and become the detective that neglects his wife. It's impossible to feel any sort of draw when you find out that every killer is killing because game. And in my honest opinion, this is the one feature that I think would take this game from being this cool, fun experience into an un unmissable gaming experience and give players that real sense of urgency that they are solving a real case and they are involved in it. Drama, consequences. The puzzle of finding out who done it is fun, don't get me wrong, but when there's no motive or reason for them killing, it feels like I'm just doing a jigsaw. The game's tutorial is amazing and it has this really cool case where you can talk to people and they will give you information and it kind of blew my mind and then I played the actual game and I realised this was handcrafted, this isn't the game. If they could somehow combine the procedurally generated random murders and combine them with some form of storytelling, I think that would do wonders to this game. And I know that I'm talking completely at my ass because I've never made a game, I have no game development skills. In my session video I made a joke about how you can't have hair and wear a hat and I got so many comments of people being like, well actually, I get it. <laughs> But if you could somehow add narrative to this game, it would change it from becoming a game where you're just ticking boxes. Because at the moment, all you have to do is kind of guess the name. If you find out the name, you win. You don't have to find the exact evidence or a motive to kind of get the guy. I'd love it if you found out who did it, but you still didn't have 100% proof. You'd still have to find a way to get that son of a bitch. Like, I want to be a detective and I want to get the motive and figure out why they did it and then say at the end, I want to be Columbo. That's all I want. I want to be Columbo, okay?
Just, just one more thing. Finding a game that you really love and excites you for the future of its development and the future for games in general is a really rare thing for me lately, but it's been getting better ever since I've been playing more indie and early access games. Because that is the only real environment where devs get to experiment and try new things. Take risks. But with all these indie games, no matter how cool they are, expectation is always the killer. Shadows of Doubt is probably the most excited I've been for a game in a very long time, and I think it could be one of the most unmissable gaming experiences ever, but I'm trying not to get ahead of myself and think of all the stuff they could add to make it even better. As I said earlier, Shadows of Doubt is a bagel. It's a fantastic foundation that is really tasty on its own, but it really does need some toppings to just make it better. But adding too much toppings to the bagel will ruin it. Too much is too much. Stop fucking putting bacon on everything. We don't need to, okay? It's all about finding the right toppings, the couple of toppings that will add and enhance the flavour of the original bagel. I know this metaphor is fucking stupid, but bear with me. I'm just hoping that myself and the community isn't hoping for this over-encumbered mess that's just gross and covered in cheese and bacon when it doesn't need to be. I want this bagel to add the couple of ingredients that will really enhance the overall experience and the overall flavour of the original bagel that it has. And then I think it would be the perfect game. Anyway, please go play Shadow without it's amazing and i'll come around to yours on sunday and we'll have bagels together how about that i'll see you later Hello, hello, I'm just, I'm just setting up. Um, I just wanted to jump in at the end of this video and uh, say thank you for watching and give like a few wee just updates about the channel and me and stuff. If you care, stick around. If you don't, well, I just wanted to say sorry to uh, Wookie Nookie here who made a joke, they made, they left a very lovely comment, but they left a joke saying something about the annual upload, and then I replied to that video being like, well, there's going to be a fucking video for Christmas, so eat that. I never said what Christmas. I looked at my YouTube statistics last year, and I only uploaded four videos in a year. That's disgraceful, and I'm very, very sorry. I thought this video was going to be out before Christmas, because I was like, oh, it'll just be a little video about this game I like, and then the more I wrote, the bigger it got. If any of you are interested, I, I edit videos for YouTubers for a living, like, that's my job, is I edit other people's YouTube videos. And uh, for some reason I thought December wasn't going to get that busy, you know, the month where everyone makes money. Uh, so yeah, it got really busy, and before I knew it, I just, yeah, so I've been procrastinating and stuff. But yeah, I just want to say hello to all the new people, thank you for all the support, um, the channel just keeps growing. Like, there's so many new faces all the time, it's really cool. I've never had this many people care about anything I've ever done. So that's, that's cool. I recently looked at my ad revenue, because I, I didn't really ever look at it, because this, this channel is just a passion project, like, I don't expect anything from it. But I was like, I've not really looked at it, like, I see the monthly earnings and it's nothing. But I looked, and for like the past year having ad revenue, you guys have helped me pay for a new graphics card. That's so cool. I now have a really cool graphics card and I can play- I was playing Red Dead 2 on ultra everything and oh my god That game is so boring But it looks great. Yeah, should we read some comments? I've been kind of lacking doing that. So let's just go to newest Oh brand new comment, right? This comes from Stephen P. Hi Stephen. Hope you're doing okay This video could have been done without that dumb guy popping up every five seconds adds nothing to the video stellar stuff Thank you, Stephen the next one is uh, from Vincent. It says, "Check my old session edit." Haha. -ha. Do you want to do that? Should we just should we watch his should we watch his edit? I just become a reaction channel right now because of this. Let's turn the shot. Up. Yeah, it's great, mate. Stellar stuff. We'll do one more. How about we do one more? Um. Should we find a nice one? They're quite rare to find. This one comes from Album Mutation 2278. You look like Reckless Ben's hotter Scottish cousin. I don't know who that is, but apparently I'm a hotter version of them. Oh, come on now. Fuck you. Anyway, again, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'm hoping this year we are going to upload a few more videos. I'm going to get this off my screen, it's freaking me the fuck out. I want to upload a few more videos than four, hopefully. Uh, the next video I have an idea for, so hopefully it isn't.
as long a gap between the videos. Um, and again, I appreciate you. Thank you for the support. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.